Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. It is that time of the month where we revisit a past issue of Sheetload of Cards with a little Sheetload Rewind. I hope you'll stick around, see what month we'll be revisiting today, see the set of cards I'm going to make, and find out how you can download the printable for free if you don't already have it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I like to stop by and revisit a past issue of Sheetload of Cards. This is a good refresher if you've already seen and maybe created this set for yourselves or if you're newer to my channel and don't yet know about the edition well here is your introduction let's find out what month we're rewinding to today today i'm going to be working with the december 2020 sheet load of cards which we will be making nine cards with just three pieces of pattern paper and some cardstock now, as always, I do have all of the instructions on here, but this video is just to kind of help you if you have any questions on how to put them together or maybe get some tips and tricks you didn't think of. Now, some months I do switch up the sheet load, maybe use different size paper, use clear card vases, do something different with the layout, but today I'll pretty much be following the original sketch and cutting guides. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the December 2020 sheet load of cards, I will tell you at the end of the video how you can do that. As always, it is free to subscribers of my channel. Once I start the process, I will tell you about tools and products that I use, but if I do leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! The papers I'm going to be using for today's cards are from Cartabella's Snow Much Fun line. And I'm going to get started by cutting these to the dimensions given on page 2 of the printable. Now because my papers have a branding strip at the bottom, I do need to cut that off first. Then I'm going to rotate my paper so it reads the correct direction and I cut a vertical piece at 5 and a quarter inches wide. Then with the leftover, I rotate it and I cut three pieces that are one and a half inches tall. Now that final piece there at the bottom, I'm gonna cut that to four and a quarter inches wide and then into three pieces that are two and a half inches tall. Now I am saving any leftover pieces of pattern paper and later you'll see how I use some of that on the inside of the cards. This is a great way to walk away with a sheet load without as many scraps. Next, I'm going to take the strips that were one and a half inches tall and cut each of those into pieces that are five and a quarter inches wide. And then finally for cutting the pattern paper, the first strip that I cut to five and a quarter inches wide is going to be cut into three pieces that are four inches tall. The remaining two pattern papers are going to get cut in the same exact way. And here is a look at all of the pieces once that cutting is finished. Next up for me was the card bases. Now this does call for five pieces of cardstock, but because you only have nine cards, you will have one left over. For myself, I will be using that leftover section for the little scallop pieces that are shown here on the sketch. Now off camera, I did go ahead and pre-cut and score and fold most of my card bases. And because the cardstock is darker, I added some lighter cardstock on the inside for the personal message. Now I did want to go ahead and just show you how you would cut and fold two of these cards from a piece of cardstock. So you'll see here I cut it in half to five and a half by eight and a half. You could definitely go ahead and fold your cards by hand at this point, but because I want a nice crisp fold and because this cardstock is a little heavier, I did bring in my score buddy 
put a score line at five and a half and then reinforce that fold with the bone folder. Next up, I'm gonna cut the pieces for CS1, which is a two and a quarter inch square. Now you could definitely adjust this to fit your needs. I am gonna go ahead and leave it as is, and I will actually be using some scraps. So I'm gonna keep cutting these until I have nine squares that are two and a quarter inches. Finally, we're going to be cutting the pieces for CS1, which is the scallop strip on the sketch. And once again, this is a great one for scraps. I am actually using the leftover card base from my five pieces of cardstock, and I cut it to a three and a half inch wide strip. And then I'm just going to keep cutting until I get nine of those that are one inch tall. The sketch for this month calls for some corner rounding and some scalloped edges. Now for my scallop edge on piece CS2, I'm going to be using this border punch from Stampin' Up! And for the rounded corners, I am using my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper. Now these are all optional things you can do to your cards. If you don't have any of these tools, you can just leave them with square corners. Now another thing with the scallop piece, maybe you don't have a border punch, but maybe you have some decorative edge dies. You can definitely use that as well. Once I had punched all of the pieces, off camera I did go ahead and add some texture to CS1 with a snowflake embossing folder. For my sentiment today, I'm going to be using Neat and Tangled's Hello Winter Stamp and Die Set. I'll be stamping the word hello and die cutting the word winter. For the word itself, I'm going to be using some Ocean Mist cardstock, and for the shadow, I'll be using a piece of vellum. I die cut all these off screen and put them together, and that's when I realized I had wanted to stamp the word hello above where winter is going to go, but I had already embossed CS1. Well, you know what? Just like I mentioned the other day, we all make mistakes, and let's just see how we can fix this. What I decided to do is I'm going to stamp the word hello on the inside. It still gets across the same message and then I don't have to redo all of those embossed pieces. Next, I'm going to add the scallop cardstock piece to the back of pattern paper piece B. To do this, I just put a strip of adhesive on the front of the cardstock and then aligned it on the back with the left side of the pattern paper. Now you can adjust here how much you want to be poking out from the back. That is totally up to you. Now while I work on some more of these, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to ask from time to time so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today I would like to know, are there any out of style or out of date tools that you still love to use? For me, it was one of the items you saw me use earlier, which was that scallop border punch. Maybe 10 years ago, maybe longer, Border punches used to be all the rage, and I collected them in any shape, size that I could. And it is one of the things I cannot get rid of. I just like the way it adds a little extra detail, and it is super easy. A couple other things I hold on to are some decorative scissors. I have a grass edge that I can't get rid of, and a decal edge. Let me know your answer, what older tools you can't get rid of, in the comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. I'm super excited to see what you have to say. Now it's time to make our card kits and that is what I call when I put together the pieces that will go on each of the card fronts. I like to do this ahead of time so I can assure that later I'm not going to end up with two pieces that have the same pattern on a single card. So I am going to let you watch it here to see kind of the process, but I will just put on some music while I finish that.
Now it's time to get those papers and cardstocks added to the card front. I grab one of my card kits that I just put together and I'm going to place pattern paper A, which is the largest one, centered on the card front. Then I take pattern paper piece C, which is the one with just that single rounded edge corner, and that gets aligned in the bottom left. Then I add adhesive to the back of pattern paper piece B, and that gets aligned at the bottom and it fills that pattern paper piece A from left to right. Finally, I'm going to add some adhesive to the back of my CS1 piece, which is the embossed piece, and this gets slipped behind the scalloped strip, and I just kind of centered it left to right with that scalloped piece. I continued this same process until all nine card fronts were decorated. Now let's get our sentiment added to the front of the cards. To do this, I'm going to be using my Art Glitter Glue in the Fine Tip Bottle, and I did do my best to put thin strips of adhesive where it would mostly be hidden by the blue cardstock on the front. I pressed that down with a stamp block, and then I added a little dot of glue where the dot in the eye would go and got that put in place. I sat that to the side with the stamp block on top of it, and then I worked on the next card. Each time after I added the word winter, I would move the block to the new card. I did, after I was all done, give these about five minutes to dry before I moved on. And finally, to finish the cards, I wanted to add just a little bit of sparkle. So I got out some of my favorite embellishments, and it's the Elizabeth Craft Designs Glitter Dots. This is the transparent silver, and these are really thin embellishments, like the thickness of a sticker. There is a silver border, and then the center is clear with glitter. I love that you can mail these easily because they're so flat, but they still give a little sparkle. I added five of the smaller ones, scattered just from the top left to the lower right of each card front. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed this rewind to December 2020. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now let me tell you how you can download the printable for free. If you would like to make your own sheet load of cards using the December 2020 printable, as always, I do ask that you are a subscriber to my channel before you click on the download link, which I'll tell you where that's at in just a minute. We do just go on the honor system here. I don't ask you to prove that you're a subscriber. Please just make sure before you click on the link that you have clicked on the subscribe button. It's right below this video. It's free and it's easy to do. You're going to find the link to the December 2020 PDF in my description box right below my PO box address. Below the link, it will say to watch the video for a password, but you watching this far is your password. If you feel like showing us your sheet load or sharing what you make, I do have a video with guidelines in that description box. Online, you will use the hashtags right up here and maybe go ahead and add hashtag sheet load rewind as well. You can also send in a card for the end of the month video. And once again, the details are in that show us your sheet load guidelines video. Until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.